Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on introduction to physical modeling. So, in this lecture we are going to talk about uh, the principles of uh, modeling, uh, in what different way the modeling is to be carried out uh, you know for the uh, Tundish steel making process. So, if we talk about the uh, modeling term as we know that uh, modeling is a well established scientific technique with uh, widespread application in engineering process analysis, design, control and optimization. So, as we know, uh, you know uh, modeling is a uh, very much known term nowadays, uh, most of the process is being modeled and uh, you know uh, we use uh, different scientific techniques and uh, its use is uh, in the different areas. So, it is used for uh, ascertaining the uh, you know characteristics of the system. Many a times uh, we do the modeling first and then we uh, try to have the plan for uh, further execution of the uh, processes. So, uh, in the case of uh, uh, you know uh, modeling, uh, now normally when we talk about uh, uh, the model, so uh, in the case of steel making uh, you have uh, Either the, either the physical model or the uh, mathematical model. So, uh, physical model will be something by in which we make a physical setup and in mathematical model we are making a model which will be set of equations or expressions and it will be talking about the behavior of the system and uh, that is used for uh, the prediction of uh, uh, you know the um, uh, parameters and its effect on the uh, flow characteristics or other uh, related uh, you know uh, processes. So, it implies uh, scientific representation either physical or mathematical of a process or a phenomenon. In physical modeling a given phenomena is uh, investigated in a replica of the actual industrial unit while in mathematical modeling given phenomena is investigated by the mathematical expressions. So, as we discussed that uh, normally whatever we try to model uh, many a times uh, you know we make this small model of uh, that particular uh, you know experimental setup or uh, you know of any process and uh, there certainly there are many uh, kind of changes because uh, uh, there is another term that is a pilot skill experiments. So, there also you do the experiment and uh, there again you have the scaling done. So, in the case of uh, physical model basically uh, when we talk about the uh, steel making process. So, in the case of physical modeling not necessarily and in fact uh, not at all I mean we normally use the different working fluid because uh, uh, it is very difficult to work with uh, you know experimentally on the uh, working fluid as molten steel itself. So, what we do is we take the uh, different kind of uh, working fluid normally we take water as the working fluid and uh, if we talk about uh, the uh, material uh, of the tundis or the ladle. So, that material is also not the actual one which is normally um, you know uh, a refractory line vessel or so. So, here we use it uh, use uh, the uh, perspex sheet as the uh, tundis or the ladle. So, that is your uh, physical model and uh, if you talk of the mathematical model. So, mathematical modeling uh, will be carried out uh, uh, by representation with uh, the different set of equations. These equations will be the governing equations and uh, uh, they will be uh, you know talking about the processes conservation of uh, you know either mass momentum 
or chemical species. So, this way you have different set of equations and this uh, involves the knowledge of mathematics or science and engineering uh, to have those uh, you know expressions which truly represent the processes which are occurring. So, that is uh, your mathematical model. So, in that case you have mathematical expressions uh, which are used for the uh, modeling. So, uh, if you talk about uh, the need of the model, if you, if you look at the model, so you have uh, uh, the uh, physical model and then you have the mathematical model. Uh, and in physical model you have uh, normally uh, scale up or you can scale down. So, normally you go for a scale down. So, you can go for the uh, you know uh, you know uh, scale up or scale down then in physical model you can have the cold model as well as the. Uh, so, if you try to have the classification of the uh, model. So, if suppose uh, you have uh, basically you have one is a prototype. So, prototype is the you know actual uh, size. Now, uh, in that uh, you may have uh, you, you will make a model. So, from here you will uh, make a model and that model may be uh, by scaling up or by scaling down. So, you can go um, by scaling up or you can go by scaling down. So, that way a model is made. Now, that model. So, this model further will be one is physical model and another is uh, mathematical model. So, uh, you know we will uh, uh, be talking about the physical model in this uh, lecture and this week uh, and uh, we will talk about the mathematical uh, modeling part uh, further you know as we move forward in this course. Now, in physical model you can go for the cold model studies and uh, otherwise uh, you can also go for the high temperature model. So, uh, so that way you know you can go for the uh, so cold model means the working fluid will be at a uh, room temperature it uh, you because uh, it is very difficult uh, many a times uh, to work with the uh, working fluid which is actual that its temperature is uh, more than 1500 degree centigrade. Now, in that uh, there has been uh, working fluids which are uh, being used and either you can use water as the working fluid or even uh, many a times some people have uh, worked and taken the mercury also as the uh, working fluid. So, uh, so that way your uh, physical uh, modeling is carried out and mostly uh, we do go for the cold model. If you go to uh, you know uh, high temperature uh, model, so there are that they are also done with uh, some uh, different kinds of uh, you know uh, metal and in that basically you may have you know the use of uh, metallic melt or what we talked earlier that you have pilot scale experimentation which go on. So, they are uh, you know part of uh, this. Then uh, if you come to mathematical, so in mathematical model certainly you are uh, uh, making different type of uh, you know equations uh, you know the, these are conserv conservation equations and then we uh, apply the boundary conditions which are subjected to the domain and uh, accordingly we try to predict the output parameters which are of interest to us. So, uh, that is how this uh, you know uh, the uh, you can have the idea about the development of model either physical or mathematical. So, uh, coming to uh, physical modeling, modeling with a physical model to represent the system in majority of cases uh, by changing the scale or size. So, uh, in fact, you have a physical model which is in front of you and uh, you work with it and uh, that is used for representation of the uh, system. In most of the cases, we are uh, changing the scale or size. So, normally, uh, we are reducing in most of the cases. So, if suppose uh, uh, in industry you have a tonnage of uh, say 2 meters of uh, or 3 meters of uh, length. So, you can have a reduced scale model physical model of 1 meter length. 
So, uh, that is uh, because uh, the handling of the you know larger vessel uh, that will be uh, uh, problematic. So, we make the smaller you know uh, models, but certainly necessarily I mean accordingly you will have to uh, change many things that we will discuss later. Uh, in steel making, so we are uh, normally we are using physical models uh, with perspex sheet and uh, water is used to represent the molten steel. So, uh, normally the models are made with the perspex sheet which is uh, transparent and uh, um, that is uh, strong also. So, you can have the, uh, the tundis made by the perspex sheet and that can uh, be fabricated by the fabrication techniques using glues and so. And uh, since they are opaque I mean uh, transparent, so uh, you can see from outside also and uh, study the flow behavior which is going on inside the, uh, the perspex tundis. Uh, then uh, we use water to represent the molten steel and there are reasons for that. Uh, one is that uh, you know water um, uh, so if you uh, talk about the kinematic viscosity of water at room temperature and uh, that of the steel at uh, its own melting temperature, they are uh, somewhat uh, similar, they are very much uh, closer. So, uh, you know when we talk about those uh, similarities, uh, in that case uh, when we talk about the fluid flow and other analysis, so in those cases we can uh, go with that. So, that is why water is mostly used and also water is easily available. So, and in water also this is being transparent. So, when we do the tracer dispersion studies, you can have the visualization uh, in a more transparent uh, uh, you know you can see it uh, properly visualize it. So, that is why you know, water is used. So, objective is to measure and visualize characteristics of the real system. So, studies of high temperature steel making provide useful insight into the system which is possible otherwise because you cannot have uh, the visualization on the actual system uh, where the steel is flowing. So, because of the very high temperature and also uh, it is not transparent. So, what is happening when uh, you know any kind of diffusion is taking place or any kind of alloying elements go into it or there are inclusions how they are going to float. So, or uh, in which zone the steel is uh, still showing stagnation or so. So, these things uh, can be seen by, by visualizing the flow behavior uh, when you have a color contrast when we put the tracer inside and by that uh, we can have an insight of uh, that using the physical model. So, that is why physical modeling becomes very important when we talk about the uh, Tundis steel making. It is used to validate uh, also a valid mathematical model. Many a times uh, this physical modeling is used for the validation purpose because as we discussed that uh, either you will have to go for uh, the actual plant readings or uh, you will have to go for the uh, pilot scale experimentations. Then only you can have the actual data. Uh, and uh, you can have a you know a prediction about the behavior of the system. So, many a times what we do is we work on the uh, physical model and uh, from there we are uh, getting certain results and from there uh, we try to validate it. So, if you, you we are getting uh, the uh, accordingly the similar kind of results for the um, actual cases also for certain parameter. In that case, we say that uh, the model is validated and then further the uh, predictions of many kind can be made by using these uh, mathematical models. So, that is uh, the uh, you know beauty of the uh, or usefulness of the uh, physical model. Physical modeling and mathematical modeling are frequently applied in conjunction. So, uh, many a times uh, when we are going for mathematical modeling, we do the physical modeling. So, that uh, there is uh, you know more of the uh, faith in the scientific uh, you know manner can be put in uh, onto the mathematical model. And when we do the physical modeling, so there can be infinite number of uh, experimentation you know permutation and combinations. 
So, uh, maybe we can do it uh, using the um, mathematical model and then be accordingly we can uh, you know limit uh, those set of experimentations to have the uh, you know prediction uh, the to have the prediction of these input parameters on the uh, output performance measures. So, most of the time when we go for physical modeling we also do the mathematical modeling or if we have to go for mathematical modeling we also make the uh, physical models. If you talk about the mathematical modeling, so as we know it is uh, uh, a mathematical model is a set of equations algebraic or differential to represent and predict certain phenomena. So, that is how the uh, mathematical models are made and uh, these equations are uh, you know the uh, equations which govern which are governed by uh, uh, certain principles uh, just like if you go for the uh, flow in the turn disk. So, it will be governed. So, since the molten steel is a uh, fluid and it is flowing inside. So, for that you will have certain conservation equations. So, they are used. So, you will have uh, uh, you know uh, continuity equation or you may have the uh, momentum conservation equation or so. Reliability of the mathematical model largely depends on how rigorously the model has been uh, made. So, how, how uh, rigorous the model is or how rigorously you have made the model. Because uh, many a times uh, when we are making the model, if we try to uh, replicate the true equation, true conditions. So, many a times these conditions are very, very complex and uh, it may be also um, very difficult and many a times impossible also to take the complete whole set of actual conditions. So, there are many compromises also made, there are made some com uh, assumptions made and uh, accordingly the model is made. So, but uh, if you the larger to the larger extent you make uh, you know to take the account of you are taking the account of these uh, you know realistic conditions. Uh, the more rigorous the model is and uh, more reliable it will be. So, uh, so that is about the reliability of that uh, model. You can have the uh, you know uh, use of modeling in steel making involving uh, uh, which will be involving complex processes which are like multi phase uh, turbulent flow, heat and mass transfer, chemical reaction. So, these are the different domains you know where the uh, modeling is being carried out uh, like uh, you have the uh, modeling of the turbulent flow. So, flow of uh, the liquid in the turn is uh, uh, turbulent. So, there uh, you will have to have those turbulence uh, quantities uh, it taken into account. You will have to have different type of turbulence models taking uh, into account uh, which should be predicting uh, the uh, in, I mean close to the values of actual like velocities or turbulence quantities or pressure or so. Like similarly the heat and mass transfer because heat is being transferred towards the wall and towards the surroundings. Similarly, there is mass transfer diffusion taking place or chemical reactions are also uh, taking place then uh, relatedly you have uh, the uh, different uh, you know domains inside the tundis and all that. So, all these uh, you know uh, are the areas where uh, the uh, mathematical modeling is being uh, used. Numerous idealizations are applied to formulate reasonably realistic process models in steel making. So, that is what we discussed that you will have to have uh, many kind of uh, you know uh, you will have to make certain adjustments, you will have to uh, you know take the assumptions and all that and uh, uh, then you uh, mean, uh, you get uh, some uh, uh, process models in a realistic manner. Uh, so, many kind of idealizations are uh, applied and uh, nowadays the mathematical modeling is a very good tool it is very much uh, popular it is because of the efficient solution algorithms and also you have uh, very good computational solvers. So, because of these things uh, now uh, nowadays we have the freedom uh, to go for the mathematical modeling we do it in a very small time uh, we 
uh, try to reach to the actual results. So, uh, basically that is uh, you know because when we talk about mathematical models in that case uh, there will be errors, these errors will be depending upon uh, you know certain kind of assumptions we take or certain round of errors will be there because of the uh, you know uh, truncations which we do in uh, or the truncation errors are there in those uh, governing equations. So, based on that there will be certainly certain errors. So, uh, you know uh, uh, so, many a times we make the grids very very smaller so that takes more computational time. So, because of the uh, you know uh, uh, evolution of very good uh, solvers as well as very good uh, machines computers uh, which are extremely fast nowadays we are in a position to do good uh, you know uh, modeling studies of the uh, real systems. Mathematical uh, modeling will be offering many advantages like uh, low cost. So, if you are uh, comparing uh, with a system uh, of the actual experimentation, then uh, the these uh, cost on those mathematical modeling where you need one uh, computation system and then there may be uh, certain programming uh, softwares or programming uh, tools. So, they are actually very very small as compared to what we do actual in, in actual cases the experiments with actual system. So, you will have a very low cost good speed uh, in, in normal case uh, if you want to do the experiments it will take large amount of time to set up the experiment and then getting the results uh, properly it will take large amount of time whereas, in the mathematical modeling uh, you can uh, do it uh, very uh, quickly. Uh, I mean as compared to that then uh, you can have the simulation also of real conditions uh, you can give all the inform you can get most of the information whatever you feel from the mathematical model uh, by changing uh, your programs you can have the informations about the output parameters. So, that way these are the advantages of the mathematical modeling. We talked about another uh, kind of uh, you know uh, trials uh, or, or models which are made. Uh, so, that is uh, pilot scale trials. So, as we discussed that uh, uh, many a times you have uh, uh, to use the similar fluid. So, in the case of uh, physical model we do not use the um, uh, same fluid. So, we are making a physical setup. Uh, normally a scaled down uh, you know models and we do with uh, water. However, uh, you know we do the real scale experimentation. So, uh, but, uh, but then uh, uh, I mean real scale experimentation is not done, but we do on a uh, smaller scale. So, that is known as pilot scale. So, they will be normally uh, smaller but then uh, the working fluid or the uh, you know material of the equipments or so they will be actual like uh, they will be normally 5 to 15 percent of the full scale system, but then uh, the actual uh, tundis will also be um, a refractory line vessel similarly ladle will also be a refractory line vessel or so. So, you will have uh, the material which is used will be the same as uh, those in the uh, full scale. Uh, uh, system, but it is smaller. So, the handling is somewhat easier, the cost involved is somewhat less as compared to the actual system uh, on which we have to uh, get the uh, details. Pilot scale systems are inexpensive to build and operate. So, basically uh, as their sizes are smaller, so you will have uh, you know uh, to invest less amount of uh, uh, you know uh, money or, or less amount of resources uh, for build, uh, building these pilot scales and uh, you can have the feel of uh, the actual uh, system running. So, you will be looking at the uh, you know uh, those uh, you can be looking into those aspects also which you are not able to see in the physical model using uh, suppose uh, uh, water as the uh, working fluid. So, suppose uh, about the heat transfer you can have the uh, actual data in the pilot scale experimentations. However, you cannot get it uh, for the uh, you know physical models. 
If we uh, talk about the uh, physical modeling in the Tundis, uh, so as we discussed that we are using uh, water as the uh, working fluid uh, for the realistic representation of uh, Tundis melt flow. So, um, uh, when we use this uh, water, so we can use the, uh, it for studying the various aspect of the melt flow. So, these various aspects are uh, namely like uh, you have a liquid splashing from the plunging jet during early stages of tundis filling. So, you will have the uh, plunging jet and uh, then it will be coming and then there will be liquid splashing. So, that can be studied. Uh, effect of open stream pouring on air or gas entrainment, uh, slag emulsification and entrainment and their effects on fluid flow pattern. So, this is another area on which you can have the uh, physical uh, model preparation. Similarly, uh, on the uh, free surface of the tundis, you can have the wave formation. So, these uh, you know uh, uh, can be studied and even there is surface turbulence. So, they can be seen using the physical models. Uh, you may have uh, the uh, flow visualization in uh, different areas of the uh, tundis. So, uh, you know uh, uh, in the different areas whether uh, you have the different dome uh, like uh, you have different volumes like uh, com can be computed uh, um, by the proper flow visualization whether the, uh, the domain is active or not the tracer which has gone which is going to the uh, certain section or not. So, that can be seen uh, using the flow visualization and also we have uh, nowadays tools by which you can even see the velocity vectors in uh, at different planes or so. Velocity and turbulence measurements in the liquid using probe. So, as the uh, flow inside the liquid is normally turbulent, I mean inside the tundis is normally turbulent. So, you can even measure these uh, velocity and turbulence quantities uh, in the tundis or, or in any, any vessel using the uh, proper probes like you have uh, laser Doppler uh, velocimeter. So, the or you have a hot uh, filament anemometer. So, these are basically the turbulence measuring uh, you know instruments so that can be used. You can do the RTD study of the uh, fluid. So, RTD is the resonance time distribution study. So, basically that we do by the tracer dispersion studies and uh, by that you can uh, have the feel of uh, the, uh, the, the time for which the you know, individual uh, you know fluid particle is trying to stay or on an average what will be the um, stay time of the fluid inside the tundis. So, that is your resonance time distribution. So, you can have that uh, at, at different points inside the tundis. Simulation of inclusion transport and uh, flotation. So, that also can be done using the physical models. You can make a model and you can have the inclusions of different uh, shapes and sizes of uh, different material which can float inside the uh, liquid. So, accordingly you will have to have the uh, density of that inclusion also being taken. How they are transported to different uh, regions of the um, regimes of the tundis and how they are floating up. So, they, these can also be predicted. Vortex uh, formation and tundis slag entrainment during draining of the melt from tundis. So, many a times uh, when we are draining the liquid metal from the tundis, uh, you know, to the mold. So, the there may be vortex formation as we had discussed earlier. So, when it will reach below certain level, then the vortexing may occur. So, and uh, in that case, there may be uh, slag which may go uh, from the tundis towards the uh, mold or for that matter from any you know vessel if you if it goes uh, you know uh, into the uh, next vessel. So, that also can be physically modeled. So, you can have a uh, slag kind of uh, layer at the top of the water and then you can do the experiment and you will see the uh, emergence of this uh, vortex as the level goes below certain uh, critical value, critical height. So, these all things uh, basically can be uh, modeled using uh, the uh, you know physical models. So, physical modeling that way uh, is uh, very, very you know uh, efficient uh, efficiently you can uh, do with the proper uh, experimentation and uh, you can further predict. So, uh, when we make the physical models 
at that time you will have to have certain considerations to be kept in mind and uh, these are about the similarity uh, issues. So, you will have uh, the uh, four different states of uh, similarity uh, I mean normally what we try to you know maintain and uh, they, they are basically defined as the um, uh, you know uh, you have the geometric similarity, you have the kinematic similarity, you have the dynamic similarity, you have the thermal similarity. So, basically they should be similar I mean if you talk about the geometric parameter geometric similarity. So, so, the ratio of these uh, you know uh, geometric uh, dimensions uh, of the uh, model and the actual. So, they should be uh, same. So, this should be a constant value. Similarly, when we talk about the uh, you know some static or, or uh, you have the dynamic uh, similarity where the forces are taken into account, thermal similarity where the heat transfer is used uh, at any point between the in the model as well as in the actual system. So, all these uh, so we will discuss it about uh, about it in our coming lectures that these are the different similarities which we need to uh, keep in mind while talking about the uh, you know making the physical models. So, this should be satisfied then only we can ensure that there is a, you know uh, proper uh, I mean a physical model is there and the prediction which is made by the physical model it will be representing the in actual the uh, you know um, the process uh, parameters or output parameters which will be taking place in the industries. So, that will help the uh, steel makers uh, to decide about the choose of proper you know process parameters. So, uh, the about this we are going to have uh, the discussion in our coming lectures. Thank you very much.